The creature that I had encountered this day, simply put, was a monster. Strange beings from humanoids to bizarre creatures are being spotted all over the world and not just in North America. Tonight, we're going to check out different eyewitness encounter stories from various different cryptids and creatures that will surely scare you. Story 1 I thought I would share this with you specifically. So, I was driving my husband's truck home one night, it was around 9pm, right around the summer of 2019, and I was driving down a gravel road in the country when I saw this huge, strange animal right off the side of the road. So as I slowed down, I actually ended up passing it, looking over and seeing this huge, wolf-like animal. But it wasn't just any wolf-like animal, it was hunched over, eating something. It stood up on its hind legs and was easily somewhere between 8 to 9 feet tall, when standing fully erect. It had its ears perked up, just like a tall dog would, and I even noticed a tail as well. It was all dark colored, with a hairy coat and I could see that it was tearing the meat off of some dead animal, of what I can only guess was probably a deer. Its eyes were set very wide apart, and its head was somewhat reminiscent of a wolf, but also different. Its back legs were rippling with muscles and were very huge. The front looked entirely like that of a human, but also a wolf. It all happened so quick that I was only able to get a quick look at it. It was so big that if it was standing in the road, it simply would have blocked the entire thing. So when I passed it, I had to double take and look back in my mirror several times. Then, it took two quick steps like a human, disappearing into the tall brush. That's when I realized what I saw wasn't a regular animal. My blood went cold. The next day, I ended up going back on that same road, and there was blood all over the gravel from right where I saw this thing eating the night before. There was no carcass, and there was no creature like this. I was terrified to go looking for it, and I most certainly would not have. Believe me, I'm a big girl, about 5 feet 9 and about 240 pounds. People might tell me it was a young moose or possibly a bull, but there's no way that those animals stand up eating, and I've never seen a moose look like that before. Moose do not resemble canine in any which way, and this creature was easily bigger than a moose. I'd estimate to be at least over 8 to 9 feet tall. Again, moose do not stand up on two legs and walk away, and they are not meat eaters. Not like this thing. Whatever this creature was, I would not want to be caught dead between me and its next meal. Story 2 I really enjoy your work, as many others also have fascinations with cryptids like I do. But I've had a few settings of my own, and I've also heard some strange vocalizations that I can't exactly explain. I'm hoping that you'll be able to share some answers with me that would clarify this. I would like to personally share one of my own sightings with you and see what you think. Also, I'm going to attempt to send some pictures at a future date. This sighting happened on October of 2017 on a path near Lake Merritt. This is in Oakland, California. I was walking on a pathway and heard something running up a hill. It sounded like it was being made by a pig, but it sounded like it was running on two legs and the grunting was very loud, which is what reminded me of a pig. I turned around and I seen this large creature running in my direction. It was only about 30 feet away from me and I could see it very clearly. It was maybe a foot taller than me and had long, dirty brown, gray colored hair. It appeared sweaty and unkempt and disgusting looking. Its arms were thin and raggedy and long legs, and it grunted as it screamed out. However, it passed me. As soon as it passed by me, it began to get down on all fours and bolted off, taking off running, and I'm not exactly sure where it went. I did not want to know. I was shocked, I was scared, I was terrified, and I had no choice but to retreat back home to the safety of whatever shelter that would provide. I've heard this now many times out in the deep woods, unsure of what exactly it is. It was possibly a Sasquatch, but I'm not exactly sure, because whatever this creature was did not resemble many pictures you would see of Sasquatch or things like that if doing a simple Google search. This was something else, like some sort of hybrid or disgusting creature. I've also heard other sounds and strange things in the woods that I can't quite identify. In fact, I've also had another sighting which I might identify as possibly a leprechaun, but I'm not too sure. Anyway, I would love to know your opinion on these things, 
and what your audience thinks that I encountered. Story 3 So, I'm very interested in the whole winged humanoid topic. I know there's a lot of conversation about it, and there are many stories and sightings of not just UFOs, but bat-like humanoids, Mothman, among many other things, especially down in South America. Well, I've had a couple of small experiences on my own and have also heard of many other encounters. I would love to share one of mine with you. The first sighting I had was in the late 1980s or early 1990s. My memory's a bit fuzzy on the exact date, so forgive me. A friend and I were leaving a private boat club late one night after a party. We were walking through the parking lot to the private road just before the highway. I can remember it was very dark that night and there was no moon. I was walking a ways behind my friend who had turned around to actually say something to me when we both noticed a very tall and wide dark figure gliding down out of the sky and over the parking lot, around the highway towards the marsh. It was definitely black against the small amount of light that the night sky provided and it was well at least 20 meters above the ground, maybe more. It made absolutely no sound, and I mean no sound when it glided, no sound when it moved, and whoever or whatever it was also made no sound out of its body. I don't remember exactly the features because it happened so fast and it was so dark, and we both witnessed it. This friend was practically a brother to me, and one who's also most sensible, most sensible I've ever known. He's also very athletic, so I have no doubts about his sanity. We both agree that this was very strange. We both had a weird feeling about the whole thing, and I think we both had a feeling that there was more to this than just a simple night bird. This was not a dream or anything of that. We both saw the same thing, and we both recounted the exact same details to each other just to ensure that we weren't crazy. Now, the second sighting was just a couple of years back. My wife and I were driving up a rural road right near our home at a pretty good rate of speed. The sun had just set and dusk was coming on in full. It was still somewhat bright out, not completely dark, but also not entirely daytime. I was driving and my wife was looking at a map. I don't know how many miles we were from home, but we were going in the right direction. I know it's odd that you might think we use a map, but I'm not a huge fan of Google Maps and I prefer to do it the old fashioned way. Now, this road we were on is not very heavily traveled in any way, so there may have been another car or two in several miles. It was nearing dusk, as I said, and we were almost to the top of a hill. At the time, I was driving a little faster than I was probably supposed to be going when I seen a large dark shape flying in front of me just over the roadway, soaring off into the distance. It was very large, a large flying thing, like the size of a small plane, but also very dark, like it absorbed the light around it, slow moving as well. But the entire thing moved quickly, it's hard to explain. It also kind of dove down and was low to the ground. I think it was maybe no more than 50 feet above the ground when I first saw it, maybe more. It was just right above the roadway, so it would have passed down easily, almost to the point of touching our vehicle. I slowed down in reaction to seeing this thing, and I remember my wife too also saw it with me. She seemed frightened, but did not say anything. Although taken aback, I personally did not feel threatened, or the need to stop and see what it was. I just wanted to go. It was large and dark and very slow moving. I have a hard time believing that anybody would be stupid enough to attempt to try and fly a hang glider in an area at this time of night, or this time in the evening I should say. I'm very interested in hearing other people's encounters and possible sightings because I've decided to go and maybe write a book about my experiences and my theory on the origin of these things. Thank you for reading this. I'm glad this is happening because it's nice to know that there are other people who have seen things. It makes me feel not crazy in that there are others who are in the same boat that I am. Story 4 I live in a suburb of Portland, Oregon, in the Columbia County area actually and I came across several of your videos about skinwalkers. Well, from what I've been following and reading, that is probably the closest thing to what I personally experienced. See, I grew up in a suburb of Portland, Oregon. The town I lived in was very small, and we were on the outskirts of the town. But we were right kind of in the middle of a farm. 
this farm went right on behind our house and continued on further back than I'd ever happened to explore. I was young and I loved to be out in the sunshine. At the time, I had a small porch on the back of the house, as well as having a large window facing the back portion of the house. I had a place set out there, and I'd get a lot of sunshine out there. The farm had some empty hay bales, and it was really fun to climb up and jump off of. I never really thought of it that much though, until one day, my mother had told me to come inside. I didn't want to, I was having so much fun out there, so she came out, picked me up physically, and took me inside. She was acting strange, and she told me that if I did not listen, she would have to tell my father. So. I proceeded to just do what she said and go along with her, going inside. I remember sitting at my window, watching the farm, and I watched as this large black dog came into view. It wasn't a normal large dog, it was massive, and immediately, something inside of me, even at that age, told me that something wasn't right. I thought it was just a regular dog, but the fur seemed all matted and thick, and it had a long snout, longer than usual. It was moving so low to the ground that it almost appeared to be crawling on its belly like a snake or a lizard. I'll always remember how weird and strange that it moved and crawled around. And then it came out the other end behind the building and I watched it the entire time. It circled around once more and also kind of crawled back around the playset as if sniffing and looking for me. My guess now, all these years later, is that it caught my scent and was trying to be sneaky, thinking I was still around, wanting to eat me. You need to know that this is the largest wolf I've ever seen in my life. We're talking about fantasy-sized wolf here. And I watched it all the way through, and that is when it looked up and looked right at me through the window. It saw me. We were staring at each other for God knows how long. We were staring face to face, and it almost looked into my soul. I've never felt that kind of fear before where my soul was being looked into. And it gave me this look, almost like a ha ha, there's nothing you can do now. And it just trotted off and disappeared. That was the last time I ever looked outside the window or played outside for a very long time. I don't know what it was or what it wanted, but I was very young and I believe my mother sensed it or knew it was there because my mother would never come out and grab me physically to take me inside. In fact, she always encouraged me to go outside and play and would always love to watch me from the kitchen window. So for her to come out and physically remove me from my place at outside was very out of character. And as I already told you, she seemed that something was really bothering her. Because it wasn't calm, she acted like there was an emergency and would not answer my questions, would not speak to me, but just make me sit inside. I almost wonder nowadays, all these years later, if she sensed this thing coming or maybe she knew. Maybe she knew something I did not, and perhaps even my father knew. Unfortunately, both my parents are long since passed and I have not got the chance to ever talk to them about this specific event. But it makes me wonder all these years later what truly happened and what they truly did know. Because it wasn't more than five to 10 minutes later when I was looking out the window eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that I saw this massive dog. And I will never forget the feeling in my gut when that thing looked right into my eyes and gazed into my soul, or so it felt like. Like it knew, ah, that's where my prey went. I'll wait for you next time. And as soon as it trotted off quickly and disappeared, I knew, even at that young age, if I went outside again, that thing, whatever it was, was going to be waiting for me. And I knew, it was going to wait till I was vulnerable. Story 5 I grew up in a town in Massachusetts that bordered the Mohawk Reservation, in Berkshires. So a few years back, I was staying over at my parents' house, and I woke early in the morning, at around 5.30 or 6. I can't exactly remember. Well, I could not fall back asleep, so I decided to get up and go for a walk. I put on my sneakers and took my flashlight, since it was still kind of darker. I then took a walk down the dirt road that runs right along the Mohawk Reservation. I walked maybe about a mile down that road to the very end, and there's a couple of houses, and I remember seeing a man sitting on the porch smoking a pipe. I continued on my walk, and eventually was thinking to myself, I should probably turn back by now, 
so I turned around and began to walk back the way I came, also noticing that the house that had the light on and the man outside on his porch were now gone with the light off. As I'm walking back, I hear a rustling in the woods off to my left, and out of reaction, I turned and looked in the direction, not even thinking anything, but probably expecting a deer, and I see a pair of yellow eyes. So I quickly shine my light in the direction, and I now see what I can only describe as a creature that was maybe about six feet tall, with a very large head, very large arms, and a very long nose. It kind of reminded me of Pinocchio, but just not as exaggerated, or maybe like those witch's nose you might see in a Halloween store. Just very long and exaggerated. Almost maybe kind of like a goblin face, if that makes sense. The skin, though, was similar to that of an ape. It kind of had very long features, a very large mouth, and it wasn't exactly a smile, but more like an evil grin. And I saw it and realized it was looking right at me. Almost menacingly, we locked eyes, and I froze. I just kept my light shined on it, but it wasn't moving. It was not making any noise whatsoever, and we had locked eyes for maybe no more than a minute or two. And then it turned, ducked into the brush, to so not be seen anymore, and I could hear it very, very slowly, walking, creeping away back the direction of where it came from, which was all just thick woods. So, either it was planning on flanking me, or circling around to grab me, or it was trying to not be seen, I'm not sure, but it scared the heck out of me. I did not run though, because I was afraid it would chase me. I was so frozen and scared out of my mind that once I regained feeling in my legs, I ran, pushing against my better judgment of not to run, and I ran as quick as I could, and I ended up telling my dad what I had seen. Now, he's pretty understanding, and he believes that what I saw was a pukwudgie, and so I said, what is a pukwudgie? And he explained it to me and told me to be very careful that these beings will come after my soul. And apparently, and this is for you to decide, not me, but apparently pukwudgies are some sort of offshoot of Bigfoot or Sasquatch, but they're apparently more menacing and they're a different animal altogether. So I don't really know. He was very vague with his details. All I know about pukwudgies is what I vaguely researched on the internet. So please, any answers you can provide me of what I should have done, what I should do to further protect myself, and did I see a pukwudgie or not? Anything would be helpful. Maybe in hindsight I should have shot at it, but I just could not believe that I had a face-to-face -face encounter with something of the paranormal. Story 6 I have a story that I would like to share. I was a United States Marine stationed at Camp Pendleton in California, Lance Corporal from 1986 to 1989 and was on a one-day field training exercise in the Mojave Desert in the Marine Air Ground Training Center in 29 Palms, California. Again, this was in the summer of 1988. I was an assaultman assigned to the 81mm Mortar Platoon. It was very hot, and we had been out on a field exercise for about 10 hours, and I was told by my squad leader to report to the captain's office. I did so. We all had our flak jackets and helmets on, which made it even more hot. About eight Marines were seated on the ground in front of the office. I sat on the ground next to the last Marine. It was all quiet, nobody was talking, and we were all just sitting there. When after a few minutes, the captain walks out of the office, and the sergeant of the guard, or the senior NCOs, called the captain sir. The captain stopped, turned to his left, and cried out very loudly in a very strange language that I've never heard before. Now, I was only about 10 feet away from this thing. It stood about six feet tall, looked just like the pictures I've ever seen of greys, except that it had two large black eyes. It definitely had a face compared to that of the pictures that I've seen. I did see its face. I couldn't see the whole body because the captain blocked my view. We all know for a fact that the captain saw this being or at least spoke to him and visibly knew. But when he walked out, there's no way he could not have known because we all knew. He dismissed all of us, which was very strange, and would later on, our NCLs informed us not to tell about anything strange that we had seen at all. I have never talked to anybody about this really, especially with any of my fellow Marines. I'll never try and divulge of who I am fully. I just thought I would share my experience and thought you might find it interesting. 
I'm sorry this might be hard to follow. I'm not the best at writing down stories, so hopefully you can get all the details out of it. But long story short, this alien, or I guess what you would refer to as a hybrid alien, walked out of the captain's office with the captain telling him, with the captain seeing him and dismissing him, completely nonchalant as if everything was perfectly normal. All of us Marines saw it and were bewildered by what we had seen. None of us will talk about it, and even now, I'm risking a lot and putting a lot on the line just telling you. Story 7 I live here in western Washington state. I'm writing you at the request of a close friend of mine. She has had a few encounters with what she would describe as dogmen around her home and would like for me to share my own encounters with you. Also, to see if you have had any other reports in this area. I live in the Olympic Peninsula in a very rural area. It's all forested around here. There are very few roads and even fewer people. I am also a full-time wildlife biologist for the National Park Service. So, I work a lot and am constantly in the woods. Now, I had my very first dogman encounter in the spring of 2018. I was on my way home from work at around 8 p.m. I had gone off work early and had gone to a local brew pub to have some beers with a group of friends of mine. I left the pub around 8.30 it was still very light out, so I didn't just want to drive home. So, I decided to walk the six miles. There are very few houses on this route, and it's mostly forest, with a few clear cuts here and there. I don't like walking home at night very much, but I figured why not. And just for some more context, years ago, back in my heyday, I used to walk five to ten miles almost every day, so I'm very athletic and this isn't really out of the blue for me. It's very much what I'm used to. So, I usually don't just do this during the day though. I had gone about a mile when I began hearing weird noises in the woods near me. It started off as a low growling and kind of a yipping sound, almost kind of like a coyote but different. I thought it was a coyote, but I had never heard a coyote up close before, not like this. I never spent too much time in the forest, at least as a kid. Even though I grew up in the suburbs, I would not experience the wonders of nature in the forest until much later on in life, when I began hiking a lot, and walking a lot, and really gaining my athleticism. I knew there was a coyote around, but other than the occasional roadkill, I never actually heard them this close before, usually just always off in the distance. I kept walking, doing my best to ignore the noises, until they began getting louder and louder, and much more frequent. All I had armed on me was pepper spray, but I do always carry my 22 pistol in my bag. I didn't want to have to use it. I didn't know if I was in danger or not, so I began walking faster, and the noises kept getting louder and louder and more frequent, when suddenly this thing launched itself out of the woods at me, and I mean launched, and once it landed, it was about 10 feet away from me, in front of me, and I mean right in front of me in the next second. I was completely terrified. I was shaking. I didn't know what to do. This thing that was in front of me had to be at least seven feet tall. Very thin, but very muscular. I mean, it was ripped. It had gray matted fur, and the face reminded me a lot of a German Shepherd. But again, it was different. It kind of like if you mixed a German Shepherd and a Coyote in one. The eyes were all wrong though, and its head was bigger than any dog I'd ever seen. This thing was growling and almost kind of barking at the same time if you could imagine what noise that would be like. It also smelled awful, like hot garbage. I had this feeling like it was trying to communicate to me, but I had no idea what it was trying to say. Although judging by its demeanor and the way it was treating me, I am pretty sure it was either get out of here or I was being planned on its next meal. But then here's where it gets crazy is within a few seconds, this thing just vanishes into thin air in front of me, like it just disintegrated. I was so shaken up that I just kept my pace and I started running, and I ran the entirety of the remaining five miles that I had, and about ten minutes later, I'm only guessing, this thing reappeared behind me, the same way that it had dematerialized before would now materialize again behind me, now chasing me, growling ferociously. This caused me to run even more, where it would disappear yet again. This went on off and on the entire way that I ran back to my house. And believe me, I know for a lot of people running five miles isn't exactly easy, 
But when you walk all the time, and when you run a lot like I do, it's not the hardest thing in the world to have that sort of endurance. But what is tough is having this crazed coyote looking thing chasing you the entirety of the way and disappearing and reappearing like some crazy conspiratorial nightmare. I was so terrified as a matter of fact, I even cut through a small section of forest that went through a large cut clearing and came out on the other side that would lead me about two miles closer to my house. And I'm pretty sure I'd officially lost it. Now, something interesting to note is that I live on a small mountain road with a few houses, barns, and some fields. So I don't know if this thing lives around there or maybe it's feeding on the deer or what. But I was so shaken up and ended up telling my roommate, who simply laughed at me and called me crazy. But he could see that I was very ill, pale, and I usually don't run five miles at a time. Although I can, it was a little much on me. He believed I was crazy, and you just never know what you're going to run into out here in the forest. This encounter has shaken my entire world and much of my views about cryptozoology. I've been a skeptic for a long time, until recent years. After this encounter though, I really do believe firsthand there is far more out there than people would ever like to acknowledge. I took a walk along the river last year with some friends and we encountered something that we simply could not explain. I was walking down a trail toward East North Avenue with one of my friends who had spotted something up in the treetops. Now she said it looked like a large bird, but we all stopped to look at it. This was around 10 in the morning, so the sun was shining very brightly and there was no real lack of clarity. But as we were looking up at this thing, it sort of just dropped down from the trees, leaning on the trail in front of us. It kind of reminded me of a giant owl with a wingspan of well over 10 feet. We all backed away from it, but it did not move. It sat there, staring into us. Now this thing looked freaky, way different than any owl I've ever seen. I don't know what it was doing or what it was, but I'm here to tell you that I don't think it was an owl. It was creepy as hell and was really giving off these really bad vibes, like it wanted to hurt us or taunt us. We all just took off running as fast as we could and it never gave chase, so I don't know what happened to it and I don't know how to explain it, but it was simply the largest owl I've ever personally seen or that any of my other friends have seen. Now, one of my friends' family member is actually a biologist and we consulted with him. There are no known owls that big or no known owls in the area that large or that looked like the description that we gave him. So we really have no idea what to think about it. But the way it looked, the feeling it gave off was not like a normal animal. There was something different about it, something that we believe could potentially be supernatural, although we are still skeptical and want to write it off as something that was just a bizarre experience, but we don't really know. So we're curious to hear what you have to say about it and if you have any knowledge or experience with these kinds of sightings or anything like that. A few days ago, I ended up seeing this black panther looking creature. And I live in an area of Pennsylvania that is quite rural. It was right around 1 p.m. when this occurred. I was walking to my car and the area that I'm at has woods all around it. So as I was walking to my car, I happened to look to my left and right and I could see something moving, something black and running that I thought was a mountain lion at first, but I got a good look at it and I see that it had a huge head on it with a long snout and a big spine that reached from the top of its head down to its back and was arched up very strangely. I also saw at some point that it went from running on all fours to running bipedally. It was running at an extremely fast pace and I was practically running to get to my car that I was so scared. When I got in my car, I was nervous and upset at what I had just seen. So I started my vehicle and began looking out the window, looking for whatever I saw, because it was either a mountain lion or a bear, but bear don't run on all fours that fast, nor do they get up and walk on two legs like this. And plus, like I said, it reminded me of a black panther just how it looked. As I began to quickly get out of there and drive off, I could see it there moving in the woods, right near actually where I was because it had ran from the north section to the eastern section of where I'm at. And that's when I saw a much better view of it. I can tell you now that this was a black panther looking thing and was not a wolf, a coyote, a bear, or anything I'd ever seen before. It was simply a humanoid creature with a huge head. 
I've read literature before on Black Panthers and folklore, but this was different. This was much different. And since then, I've tried to familiarize myself with the subject of Black Panther humanoids, and although there hasn't been a whole lot, there has been sightings apparently in South America, which is very strange to say the least. And I'm glad I'm not the only one to have seen anything like this. I had told my mother and my wife about this, and they actually believed me. I ended up trying to Google Black Panther humanoids and found out more sightings about South America. What I read has simply amazed me. I really don't know where this creature could have came from, or why it's here, or even what it is. The area at which I'm at is very rural and has a lot of farmland and some corn. A lot of the animals are things like horses, sheep, things like that, even pigs chickens, everything you'd expect to find in a pretty rural farmland area. So maybe it's possible that this creature, what I'm assuming to be a creature, is feeding off the livestock and the ample amount of deer in the area. But I don't talk to any of my neighbors or anybody who has livestock, so I couldn't tell you if their livestock is being picked off by this thing or not. It's all interesting to me, but also very frightening at the same time. What's also interesting is I'm only about three miles away from any major highway, so it's possible that this thing might have been spotted by more than just me. Besides my mother and my wife, I've not told too many people about what I saw because I'm pretty sure that people would not believe me and laugh at me, or they thought I was drinking too much. But anyway, thank you for your time and keep up the good work. Story 10. I'm running you this because I had an experience on the afternoon of Sunday, August 19th, 2017. I was walking my dog, a husky mix at a park right near our home, actually near the public library. It would be about a one minute walk to our house from the location. I did not witness any UFOs that day, but instead witnessed something much more horrific. This incident took place on the other side of my neighborhood, in a wooded area that is behind a gas station. I have driven through this area many times and have never really walked through it until this day. And now I never will again. I will also include the exact coordinates for you too. This way, you may detect other incident notes, though I doubt any of your readers will be near South Bend, Indiana. This is what happened. I was walking through a small trail that is cut right through the woods from a gas station on the east side to the parking lot on the west side of the woods next to the public library. I heard something yell out, and I had just begun the trail and was on the southwest side of it. I began to move quickly in hopes that I can get away from whoever this was, because the sound that I had heard sounded like somebody who was going to hurt me. I know that might be hard to explain, but it sounded like somebody angry coming at me in the woods, so I thought I was either going to get murdered or mugged or something, and I noticed that now my dog was not with me. I had let go of the leash somehow, which I should not have, and immediately turned and worried about my dog but it was already too late. Now, I see my dog is going frantic, charging towards whatever's in the wood line. What I thought what I had heard in the woods was actually not a person, but a large animal, which was strange because I always think back and wondered how it could have possibly mimicked the voice of a human, but that's a story for another time. This creature of what I was seeing was actually a large wolf, and it was right on the northeast side of the trail, my dog was on the northwest side, heading in that direction. I saw this thing open its mouth wide and prepare to bite into my animal. I yelled out for fear of my dog, and this wolf, perhaps confused by me yelling at it, hesitated and began to direct its attention towards me. And that's when I felt all of its hatred and malice inside of it directed and put right on me. And I swear, it almost gave me a smirk out of the side of its mouth and quickly vanished into the wood line and that's when I could hear it quickly moving down to the trees right where I'm at. And I quickly yelled at my dog to come toward me. My dog is still going frantic, still acting crazy, began running back toward me, but also barking at this large creature that was right inside the woods. We decided at this point that we needed to leave and now. There was no getting away from whatever this thing was. As I'm running with my dog now in my arms to try and keep her safe, I climb up to a small telephone pole and climb up it shortly to climb onto a large thick tree branch. And we're just sitting there waiting for whatever this thing is to get us. And I held on 
and I held on. And I held on to my dog and clung on to her. I felt so bad for her. Her heart was pounding, and she went from frantically barking to now whimpering and crying. I could now hear heavy footsteps approaching our direction, but could not see anything. I could sense that this thing was circling us. I don't know how long we were up there, but then I heard a crashing sound coming through the woods, uh, coming towards the side of the gas station of the trail. I figured it was safe because the crashing sound was a bit away from us, and I figured if we ran, we could probably make it. So I grabbed her, we dropped down, and we made it all the way back to our house. After that, I did not go taking her out on the trails for a long time after. Now the following day, I had heard from a friend who went on the same trail that they had found large canine tracks, and much bigger than what my dog can make. I have never been so sure in my life of something like that I saw, some large alpha carnivorous creature that could have torn me and my dog to shreds. The creature that I had encountered this day, simply put, was a monster. Story 11 I saw a wendigo with my own eyes this past fall when I was fishing on the Red Pine Beach at the river near Marinette County in Wisconsin. It was around 6.30 p.m. on an October day in late October of 2011. The sun had just about gone down, but it was still barely light enough to see with the aid of a headlamp. Something caught my eye as I was sitting on a large rock catching bass. In the woods near the edge of the water, I saw movement in the trees. Needless to say that I was surprised when I saw a creature that looked very tall and extremely skinny, like an emaciated deer. It was at least nine feet tall, standing bipedally. It reached out with one of its front hooves or hands to grab onto the tree, and I was only about 120 yards away. I sat there in amazement as it looked at me, turning around, walking away, and going back down again on all fours. It kind of like an uh-oh, I've been caught. It looked up at me again as it kind of shook its head, turning and almost crawling away. It was grayish in color and had a very large snout. It had deer-like ears that were semi-forded positioned and was literally hairless from the neck up. The front portion of this deer was very broad-shouldered and had very long, exaggerated front forearms. Anyway, I made sure the next day to go back to that spot and look for any prints. I did find some that were in the muddy area near the edge of the woodline. I made a note to myself to keep going back here, maybe with a game trail cam, because I was very perplexed at what I saw, and not so much frightened. Unfortunately, I feel like there has just been something that's been keeping me from going back to that spot again and again. Fear, actually, like something might be in that area that's going to come for me. I'm still startled by this and have also been filled with excitement and awe at the same time. I've seen something that nobody else has. For a long time, I was actually convinced that this was a Bigfoot, but in recent years, I don't really think so. I really do think that this was possibly a Wendigo sighting based on my research and interest in the subject. I never thought of the north woods of Wisconsin would hold such a large population of strange creatures, but obviously, if there's one, there has to be more. Story 12. I have a strange story to tell you. This happened in a place called Thompson Lake in New Hampshire. I was sitting on a rock with my boyfriend, shooting the breeze. We were there for all about five minutes when we had heard a loud, almost whooshing mechanical noise above us. My boyfriend and I looked up and saw this large, triangular, silver-shaped craft hovering right above the forest, almost like it was fading in and out of time. We both agreed that it was the size of maybe a football field. Massive. The craft made a loud humming noise and shot a beam into the forest. The beam was bright green and seemed to incinerate things in its path. After the beam ended, after about three seconds, the beam shut off and the craft shot high above into the sky, disappearing for good. I asked my boyfriend Scott what was going on, and he did not know either. At this point, we're both in hysterics, freaking out, and we decided to leave. We ran to the car and drove off. I've seen UFOs a few times in my life, but this one was the scariest and easily the most surreal. I don't believe for a second that we were just seeing things or hallucinating, because this happened right in front of us, where we could clearly see it during daytime. 
there was nobody else in the adjacent area that we were aware of, or anybody else who had seen it or talked about it. This took place in October of 2014. Story 13. I'm a 59-year-old, retired Harford County, Maryland police patrolman. I've had an encounter with a strange-looking humanoid. I've heard some odd sounds in the back deck of my house. I went to the sledding glass door and looked out. What I saw was about six foot tall and very wide across the shoulders with a very small head. The body looked very emaciated and also very a humanoid, covered with shaggy looking brown hair. It stepped out behind a tree and peeked out from the other side. I only saw part of its face, but it was light colored. The body, as I said, was wide and kind of flat from the waist up. It looked, to me, like it had a double row of abdominal muscles. It looked kind of like an ape to me, but very pale and very humanistic features. The eyes were also white in color and set very far apart, farther than normal humans. It also, during the arms and legs, looked very muscular. I also noticed that there was no neck that I could see, and the head was practically set right on the shoulders. Afterwards, it stepped out from behind the tree and began to stand up fully erect, because it was crouched down apparently. It stood well over eight feet tall, and when it stood up, the shoulders went with it, and so did the head. And I saw that its arms were longer and skinnier than I had originally imagined, but also more lean. It reached up, grabbed a branch, and broke it down. I watched it as it walked away with the branch, looking at it through my binoculars. It kind of had a swagger like a gorilla, but also not. I ran onto the deck, but it was already gone. I have no idea what it was. I had a friend who lived across the street, down the road from me. I told him what I saw, and I asked him if he had ever seen or heard of anything like this. He told me that he'd heard some strange sounds at night in the woods, but didn't think too much of it. Some strange screams. He said he had seen some odd human-like tracks back there, but nothing too unusual. Thought it was maybe just somebody trying to play a prank, but now, maybe he's not so sure. Could this have been an ape, or could this have been something else? I've heard of Bigfoot, but this looked so weird and so different. Like a very lanky, pale Bigfoot. Have you ever heard of this? Story 14. I'm writing into you about this because I saw what I believe to be a stickman on November 24th, 2015, right around 5 in the morning. I live in a small town here in Kentucky, and I used to be the mayor and a volunteer firefighter. I was on my way home when I saw what I believe to be a stickman on the side of the road in a curve of the left turn. I was heading south on US 68, and the turn was right next to the airport. It was right before the airport road turns right, and I made a turn in front of the airport on December 9th, and I saw the same thing again. I did not slow down, and I didn't get to see what direction it was walking. I work third shift, and I feel like I've seen the same stickman a couple of times, and he'll be back again. This creature was not human, and I know what I saw. Thank you for your time, and I'll try and keep you informed of my sightings. Story 15. I have a short story to tell you. It's about a sighting that a friend and I had when we were much younger. One summer night, we were sitting on the back porch just talking. We, I'm male and my friend was female. We were talking about when we would be able to drive. We were at summer camp for kids and we lived in a very rural area surrounded by farmland and woods. Our camp was in a clearing at the end of a long gravel driveway with woods on either side. It was very dark in the woods at night and the full moon was out and it just passed its peak in the sky so it wasn't completely, completely dark. There were no streetlights, of course, so you couldn't really see much in the woods. And the moonlight, even though it was illumination, did not give off too much light. We were just starting to see the interior of the woods turn a dark blue color, when we heard a sort of splat sound on the gravel to the right of us. We stopped talking, looking toward the driveway where we had heard the sound, and we saw something walking in the gravel that we can't describe very well, but I'll do my best. It reminded me of an upright wolf. It was walking on all fours, but it had very small hands and limbs. What was strange to me was the way it was walking and moving. Even though it was on all fours, 
It reminded me a lot of somebody who walks on two legs, obviously, but is trying to be weird and walk on all fours. That's kind of what it made me think of, like a person who would walk on all fours. How it looks awkward and they're using their hands and legs. Like it wasn't natural for it to walk on all fours. Me and my friend were not only frightened by this, but very confused. It was walking in a straight line towards the woods, and it moved very, very slowly. We noticed too that as it was moving in the tall grass, walking like this, each pitter-patter of its feet would kind of make like a wet splat sound. It was very strange. And my friend and I it kind of huddled together in fear watching this thing as it disappeared into the wood line before we saw a large tree get knocked down in a loud scream. Now, at this point, we were so frightened we had actually ran into the bunkhouse that we were staying in. I turned on the light and we both stared, looking out the window. And we could see this thing now, standing just at the edge of the woods, fully erect on two legs. And the way the moon was in the sky, it was almost like giving it a light show, fully illuminating it completely. But here's the disturbing part, is that it was looking right in our direction and began to go back down on all fours, awkwardly just like before, and start to move in our direction. At this point, we are completely terrified of what we're seeing, and we could start to see more of its face and more details as it's coming towards us in the tall grass. And my friend and I are peeking up through the window, watching this thing. Its face, although I described it earlier as looking like a tall upright wolf, did not look like a wolf or a canine at all but more like a human or a disfigured human's face. And we could see it had long, three long spindly fingers that would almost kind of crawl around the grass. And so we hid underneath the window, waiting for this thing to go away. We could hear it start to approach the cabin and we could hear it sniffing around like it was looking for something. And by now, this thing had to have been out in search for us. We knew that it saw us. After a couple of minutes, the sniffing stopped and we knew that it was either gone or waiting for us to show itself yet again. I actually just recently called my friend whom this encounter happened with, and she had recounted her version of the story, which was pretty much the same and lined up with all the details I gave you, but one thing that I had forgot to mention that I think she saw more than me was its eyes, and how she described them was, I quote, like torchlights in its eye sockets. She described them as shining so bright that it was like embers or coals that was this orange reddish glow and it really scared her. Me? I must have blocked that out because I really don't remember that, but we were both pretty freaked out by this memory and still remember it a little too vividly for our liking. Both of us have since moved on with our life and we have not encountered anything like this ever since. I have never really heard of Dogman until much later on until I started seeing sighting reports about it and ultimately finding your YouTube channel which I never even knew they existed, really, until I started listening to episode after episode and hearing all the details. The only problem of why I'm not exactly sure if what we encountered was a dogman is the features. While many of your episodes and many sightings report very distinctive canine features, while the body of this creature we saw was wolf-like, the face was so human-like. It was disturbing, like somebody caught halfway between a shapeshift or something, or it was like a werewolf that somebody had stopped transforming halfway through, if that makes any sense. And the wet, weird plopping sounds every time it moved, and the face. None of it made sense, but it sure as heck freaked us out really bad. This was also in Illinois. Story 16. I saw the thing in southwestern, more central Pennsylvania. This would happen back in 2009 or 2010. I was busy driving with my brother and nephew. We were en route to 20, just a few miles from Ardensville, Pennsylvania. The incident in question happened on a stretch of road with a few houses and rather poor lighting. We were driving along and I saw something running up ahead. Now this was no deer, although I would say it was the size of a large buck, maybe five to six feet in length, running on all fours. But the more we got a look at it, it was very dark in color and also had a tail about four feet long. The body was roughly two feet wide, and we really quickly realized this was nothing like that of a deer or a buck. It was moving extremely fast on the left side of the road, and I hit the brakes, thinking, what are we looking at? Now, my brother, who was in the passenger seat at the time, said he could not believe what we were seeing. 
my nephew in the back said that this was something big and something like no other animal he had seen. He was convinced that it might be a bear, but the details did not add up. And we're arguing amongst ourselves while seeing this, and I'm telling him, this is not a bear because we cannot identify what this is. It was already so dark. Like I stated earlier, there's not much illumination on that stretch of road to begin with, and we're trying to figure out what this thing was. And as we can kind of make out more and more details of this thing, because it's kind of zigzagging and turning, this thing looked more like a lizard running on all fours, which didn't make any sense at all. However, we could see that it was so big and so fast, and of course, none of us had a camera on us or anything. This is the only time I saw this creature. We've kind of argued back and forth that perhaps it could be a chupacabra, and I told my brother that that's what I think it is. We have since argued back and forth, even to this day, exactly what we think we saw. He believes it was a Bigfoot, I believe it was a chupacabra, and my nephew, well, he's not too sure about what we saw, but knows that it's something strange. Story 17 I live about only two hours away south of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. One thing I thought you might find interesting is in the local newspaper, not too long ago, there was actually a small little article about two women who were driving at night and heading north on I-79. The article read that they saw what they described as a large winged creature that swooped in front of their car. The women were quoted as saying that the creature was about four feet tall and had a wide wingspan. The creature was then described as being brownish black in color and having a pointed nose. They claimed the creature was nocturnal, at least how it looked, and a strong stench of rotting meat and sulfur. They said they were so scared by this creature and the look of evil on its face. It makes me believe that they saw some sort of bat creature or possibly a mothman. I myself live in a very rural area and I am quite aware of the things that go bump in the night, unfortunately. I personally have had more than one encounter and it seems even my children and friends are cursed with the same thing. When you hear about these kinds of things in the newspaper, it further validates your own personal experiences and the things that are really out there. Even though the media doesn't give that much attention to these sorts of stories, all you need is a little to further validate your claims and experiences. I cannot take one step out onto my property, especially in the evening and nighttime, without feeling like I'm being watched. And the feeling worsens the later it gets and the closer it gets to 3 in the morning. I'm not sure why, but... I feel there's an evil presence lingering around. My kids experience it, my friends experience it, and we all think it's not just a demonic spirit, but entities, physical entities that are watching over. My family and I have seen a lot of things out on our property, everything from lots of smoke late at night, which was very strange, like this black mysterious vapor just randomly appearing in places that don't make any sense, strange four-legged black figures moving off in the field and watching us. In fact, when my son was four, he claims that he saw this black figure looking into his window with red glowing eyes. I've also seen other strange things like large canines, bipedal panther looking things, among many others. I've even had a few run-ins with Bigfoot that were very, very negative and I don't really want to go into too much detail because I'm worried that that negativity will attach itself to me yet again. So all I just want to do is get this information out there to let you know that people like me exist and we're not crazy. We do know in fact what's going on. Thank you for your YouTube channel. It's the only place we can turn to and find the answers that we're looking for. We hope to hear back from you soon. Story 18. I am writing to Sharon with you an experience that I personally had with what I believe to be a skinwalker back in 2010. I'm 28 years old, I'm a Native American, born and raised here in New Mexico. I was raised on the Pueblo and have also lived outside the country. This will sound strange because I don't believe in what I saw, but I want to tell you my story. I was living in town, working in a casino, but wanted to get back to my roots. So, I moved back out in Santa Ana Pueblo, near Albuquerque, built my own house, and I lived the country, and being around animals and enjoying the fresh air. I've always loved the night and the darkness. I feel safe in it. Unfortunately, that feeling of safety was shattered with what happened to me. I went to bed one night feeling pretty good. 
I was drinking some beer, smoking a cigarette, thinking about chasing girls. I fell asleep and what I saw next will stick with me for the rest of my life. I was woken up to the sound of an animal scratching on my back door. At first I ignored it, but then it began getting louder, like a child was hitting it. I got up to see what it was and when I looked out the window, I saw something that I can't explain. It was a creature that I have never seen before. It was hunched over, long arms that had long hair all over its body. But the most disturbing part was its face. It was like a person that had a wolf's face, and it was staring into me, or like a demented coyote's. The look in its eyes was pure evil, and I froze for a second, and I think it knew that it had me. It began growling at me and showing off these yellow, nasty, rotted teeth. It was a sound that it emitted like nothing I had ever heard before. It was kind of like a growl and a roar, but mixed together. And I was so scared, I could not do anything. And so I started crying and praying. I ran to the back of my trailer, grabbing my grandfather's knife that I've always kept and hid in my room, not really sure what else to do. I was trying to stay awake, listening for it to return. Oh yeah, I should also include this in the story. After I saw this creature, the second I saw it, it let off this feeling in my body like I was falling asleep. It was very strange. It's almost like it was putting me to sleep. I don't know how to explain it. I've never felt so drowsy before. Maybe it's some sort of tactic that it's going to use to make me fall asleep so it could get into my house and kidnap me. After some time, it simply just went away. I don't know what happened to it. I don't care, but it just, it was gone. There's nothing else. It's like the atmosphere around my entire trailer went back to normal. Whereas before, it was gradually getting more and more hazy and cloudy. And that's the best way I can describe it to you. The following day, I had gone to my parents' house to tell them what had happened to me. They are very enriched in their native culture and informed me that I was being stalked and had been marked by a skinwalker. That had probably gotten involved with the wrong crowd and or somehow had allowed one of these beings to attach itself to me through a dark spirit. Eventually, this caused me to sell almost everything I own and move back into Albuquerque. I had a friend whom I stayed with for a few months before getting my own place again. Although, I'm still worried about it to this day that another dark spirit or a skinwalker will find me and attach itself to me yet again. I've tried to clean up my habits a little bit, I cuss a lot less, I drink a lot less, and I don't smoke anymore. I'm not sure if any of these things have anything to do with what happened to me, but it makes me wonder that whatever's out there is still looking for me, and maybe just one night it will find me again. I always worry about that. Story 19. My sighting took place in 1985 in the Bear Creek area of the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State. This area is thick with trees and very dense underbrush. We were on a hike at dusk and I kept hearing sounds like something large moving about in the wilderness. I told my friends about it and he told me that he had heard it too. The noises were gradually getting closer and this is when we both started panicking because we kind of thought it was a bear. We did not have a weapon like we should have, and we both thought that this could be a mama bear with cubs. We were only about 40 feet from the road, and I steered us closer to the road, thinking maybe we can climb a tree if we had to, and no sooner had we walked 10 feet when this creature steps out of the woods. We both got a very clear look at it. It was like a seven to eight foot tall werewolf, it walked upright like a man, like you'd expect a werewolf to be, but was covered in blackish brown hair. The head was similar to that of a wolf's, and so were the hands. I've always been terrified of werewolves, so this was like the most frightening thing I'd ever seen. I grabbed my friend, and we ran towards the road. And we had to run right past it, but it did not attack us. It just stared at us with these yellow greenish eyes. My friend and I made it back to our car, but we could not get it started. In fact, our cell phones also died too, and there was a strange static in the air. We sat there in the car, nearly crapping ourselves, thinking that this creature or werewolf was going to break into our car and kill us, but it never happened. We sat there for hours, not sure of what to do. We're kind of out in the middle of nowhere, 
at least the spot in which we were at, our cell phones were dead, we had no way to charge our phones, our car would not start, we had no electronical devices that would work, and we were simply far too terrified to get out of the car, and there was nobody else around. So we sat and we waited for hours. At around midnight or so, magically, our phones and our car all simultaneously turn on. My key was not even in the ignition when the car simultaneously came on along with my phone. And since this has happened to us, my friend actually had a very similar creature sighting, but claimed that the creature he saw was taller, about 10 feet is what he said, and a lot less furry, or claims that the fur was a lot shorter. He also claims that the creature he saw was walking on all fours, and said he'd seen it about a quarter mile away. It's been many years now since our werewolf sighting, and even thinking about it gives me the shakes. I don't know if it was a demon manifesting as this, because I've learned about that from my great aunt, who is very much into witchcraft, that demons can take on the physical manifestation of things you fear the most, kind of like in the movie It. Growing up, my brother always used to watch werewolf movies, and I was always terrified of them. But I never actually saw one until many years ago, when I had the sighting that I'm telling you about. It's really hard for me to talk about this because it scared me so bad. I have a few friends who are Native American, and I've told my story to about them, and they don't believe that it was a werewolf traditionally, but they believe that it was actually an offspring of a woman who had once lived, and she apparently had bred with a wolf, making half-human, half-wolf hybrid babies, also known as dark spirits, or I can't remember what they refer to them as. Apparently, these wolfman-like creatures are very common all throughout the northwestern tribes, and they all have their own story of a wolf-like man or a wolf-human hybrid, living deep in the forest, in the mountains, in the deserts, everywhere. I'm not an expert on the subject, but I'd like to think that my sighting proves the legitimacy of other people's encounters. What do you think? Hey guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button, leave a comment below, let me know how you liked it, and also if you're new to the channel, or maybe you're just checking out this video for the first time, be sure to also subscribe as it helps out my channel greatly, and stay tuned because I'm going to be releasing a lot of great more videos in this style of format to try and change things up and experiment a little to see if you guys like more of the personable style of video format. Also be sure to leave any recommendations of content you want to see below in the video comments, and I'll get to it as quick as I can. As always guys, I will see you all in the next next video.